All right, check out these cabinets. We got five on the top, five on the bottom. The same thing on the other side. Okay, these cabinets, each single one holds about 100,000 butterflies. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Every butterfly in the entire world can be found in one of these cabinets, including some of the fan favorites. We have Pepelianidae, that is swallowtail butterflies. Let's go to G, that's where the big boys are. The bird wings, everyone loves the bird wings. You have the green ones, you have the blue ones, you have the green and yellow ones. And if we go down, my personal favorite swallowtail, I think is down here, look at this guy. The purple spotted swallowtail. Everybody applauses, cause it looks so great, <clears throat> but, None of these bird wing butterflies, none of these large, exotic looking butterflies can hold a title for the most rare, unusual, and coveted butterfly in our collection of hundreds of thousands of Lepidoptera. To find that one, we go to Entomology, Cabinet 20. Open it up to 20P. Pull, oh shit, this is the wrong one. We go to Entomology, Cabinet 19. We pull it out. We go to 19P, bring it out, and we have the regal fritillaries. These are common butterflies throughout the entire United States. But this one specifically is so enormously rare that it is unrivaled in the entire collection. If you might be wondering why, first we have to travel to the bird collection for our explanation because today, we're talking about sexual dimorphism, my friends. We go past this ornithology section by the mammals, by the teaching collection, and we wanna end up right here in this cabinet, ornithology cabinet 32, cardinalidae. We're looking for Northern cardinals. I'm gonna grab this little stair stepper thing right here, pop it up. Be careful, last time I did this, I smashed my head into that light. Lock it open, here we go. Hello, this is a quick warning. We're about to go into a cabinet that has preserved animal specimens. That means that they are, there are a lot of birds in this one. So if you have a problem with that, that's totally okay. But these are all preserved for scientific purposes, for research to preserve, preserve these very species. If that's okay with you, go on, it's a great video. That's your warning, ta-ta. Sexual dimorphism is basically the idea that the male and female version of the same species will look different in color or size. The most common example that, that might come to mind are, where are they? Northern Cardinals, right here, AKA Cardinalis Cardinalis. That's an easy Latin name to remember. Pop this open, when you think of Cardinals, I'm sure you think of something that looks like this. This is a male cardinal, you know, bright red. But right next to it, we have another bird that looks really brown. This also is a cardinal. It's just a female cardinal. Here we have a huge tray of tons of cardinals. Red ones are the males, brown ones are the females. Sexual dimorphism, kind of easy to understand. In this case, it's very striking. That's not always the case though. To show you another example of sexual dimorphism in like, a common species that you guys might know. We're gonna go all the way to this corner, past the prairie chicken. We're gonna rub the mastodon tooth just for good luck. Over to the teaching collection, which is over here. Every museum has something called a teaching collection right here. This is the entomology teaching collection. The teaching collection is basically like specimens that have no real scientific value and they can take some wear and tear and it's okay if they get damaged. So here, let's go. We're looking for, I think it's down here, Nuthalidae, brush-footed butterflies. Specifically, we're looking at monarchs. Okay, let's pull this out. Boom, these guys are what we're looking for. I'm gonna grab this out, oh shoot. Carefully, take it over here and uh, pop this glass off. I'm gonna take the hooks off. This is gonna take a while. Cut. All right, here we are. Here's the tray. Just like the cardinals, monarchs are also a sexually dimorphic species. The males and females look different. Do you know the trick how to tell the difference between male and female butterflies, specifically monarchs? I'm about to teach you right now. Okay, ready? Here they all are. Let me see if I can point some out. Hmm. Okay, ready? You see this butterfly right here? This one is a male. This one over here is a female. Can you figure out how to tell? It's very, very clear. And once I describe it to you, you'll be able to do this really quickly. I'll give you just a couple more seconds. Okay, it all has to do with the hind wings in the back and specifically that tiny little spot right there. 
that spot is a bunch of scent scales, which are specialized scales that male butterflies use to emit pheromones to attract females. Only male monarchs have those little spots in the back. If we go over here to the female, notice how she doesn't have those spots right here. Now that you know this, this is really easy to kind of use to distinguish all of these. Before, you had no idea, and now you do. Look, ready? Male. Male. Female. Female. How sick is that? It's like a magic trick. All right, so we understand what sexual dimorphism is. Basically, males look one way and females look another. So what's the big deal about this, this whatever, this regal fritillary that we have? Well, let's open the cabinet. Let's go back down to 19P. We're gonna pull it out and take it over. Ah, I gotta do this with two hands, it's too valuable. I'm gonna... Okay, here we got it, ready? Here they are. These are regal fritillaries. Here is the last sexually dimorphic quiz that we're gonna have today. Okay, ready? How to tell the difference between a male on the left and a female on the right. This one's a little bit easier. Let's see if you can tell. A couple more seconds. Males on the left have that line of orange spots right here. Females on the right don't have that line of orange spots on the hind wings. So this is a male over here. This is a female over here. This is a male over here. That line of orange spots is what we're talking about. How does this have any effect on this guy right here? The rarest butterfly in the entire collection. We'll just have a look. You see on the right hind wing, it has that line of orange spots, but on the left hind wing, it doesn't at all. The right exhibits traits of a male butterfly. The left is female because this is a bilateral gynandromorph, a special type of mutant animal where it's almost split directly down the middle. The right is male and the left is female. How sick is that? That's pretty cool if you ask me. A bilateral gynandromorph is, a, is an animal that's split right down the middle. One side is male and one side is female. Not only in kind of the, the, the patterns or the, or the size of the body parts, but also genetically. One side is male, XY, and one side is female, XX. Yes. Absolutely insane. Oh, outrageously uncommon too, which makes this the rarest butterfly in the entire collection.